Stoichiometric relationships across chemical change. We can use these relationships to help us predict the amount of product produced in a chemical change, or if we know the product that we want, how much reactant we can use. This is because the numbers or coefficients used to balance the elements on each side of the equation can be interpreted as the number of moles of each of the substances. These are called stoichiometric coefficients and represent the number ratio of element and or compound across a balanced chemical equation. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. In this balanced chemical equation, we have the combustion of butane. Butane is C4H10. It's reacting with oxygen to yield carbon dioxide and water. The numbers in front of all of these compounds or elements are the stoichiometric coefficients, and they can be interpreted as individuals, two molecules of butane, or two moles of butane. Um, and the same is true for each of the um, stoichiometric coefficients. But the important thing is, is that these stoichiometric coefficients tell us the ratio in which these different reactants react with one another and the ratio of the reactants to the products. This is because this is an equation. And so what this is telling me is that every time in this chemical change that I react two moles of butane with at least 13 moles of oxygen, then I'm going to end up making eight moles of carbon dioxide. And I can write an equality expression there. And because I can write an equality expression, I can divide both sides of that expression by um, one side of the equation. In this case, I'll divide both sides by the moles of carbon dioxide. And when I do that, I end up with an equality, or excuse me, a unit factor, because this eight moles of carbon dioxide divided by eight moles of carbon dioxide equals one. So I have created a per expression or a ratio that says per, for every two moles of butane um, per eight moles of carbon dioxide produced. Or if I know the amount of butane I have from this ratio, I can predict the amount of carbon dioxide that I'm going to make or vice versa. I could write these types of equalities for every um, relationship across the chemical change. For example, in this chemical ch change, I know that every time I react two moles of butane, it's going to react away 13 moles of oxygen. So now I can express a relationship, two moles of butane per every 13 moles of oxygen consumed. I will consume two moles of butane. And I can also divide both sides by the butane and end up with another per expression that says 13 moles of oxygen per two moles of butane. And what I have essentially done here is use these stoichiometric relationships to create um, conversion factors to convert from one uh, reactant or product to another across the chemical change. For example, if I said, um, let's see, how many, how many moles of water will I produce if I react eight moles of butane? Okay. In this case, since I know there's a relationship between the amount of butane uh, consumed and the amount of water produced from the stoichiometric relationships, I can convert from moles of butane, given eight moles of butane, C4H10, I can create, I can create my own conversion factor from the balanced chemical equation converting from moles of butane to moles of water because I know that the relationship is that for every two moles of butane I, cre I make 10 moles of water. So since I'm converting from butane to water, the per expression that I'm going to, um, two moles of butane equals 10 moles of water. So the per expression that I'm going to um, use is going to be divide both sides by two moles of butane and end up with 10 moles of water per two moles of butane. And I'm going to use that per expression in my conversion. So it'll be, let's see, 
<clears throat> two moles of butane for every 10 moles of water produced. And so in this case, I can predict that starting with 8 moles, knowing that I have plenty of oxygen, um, I can simplify this as 4, 1, I'm going to end up in the proportion of the moles of butane cancels, I'm going to end up with 40 moles of water. That's how we can use the stoichiometric coefficients as ratios and conversion factors to predict how much of each reactant or product um, is needed or given, given